So how did you get into software engineering then? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, many years ago. So, well, first of all, I studied computer computer science in school. Okay. And um, that's in London here. Yeah. I studied computer science. So that already gave me an understanding of what, uh, 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 what the potential is going to be for uh, software development. Now, when I studied computer science, I, I was exposed to many aspects of the IT world from uh, hardware to uh, to networking to software and uh, for me I just sort of clicked with software because that's something although it's intangible but I could understand it I, could, I know what it is to write code right I wow. know what it is to compile your code I know what it is to you know is a is a beautiful feeling when you actually see your product being delivered and a lot of people start using it that's a wonderful feeling so I really enjoy that you know so that's why I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go into software development and software uh, engineering. Just keep coming. Wow. Yeah, I love <laughs> that. You see, <laughs> the way you talk about it, is so, it sounds so interesting. If I was not in health and safety, I'm sure I would have come to software development. <laughs> because man, this is really good. Because the, the, the future is in that space now. Absolutely. The future is in that space. So many things happening right now. Biotechnology treatments of gene you know sometimes when i read about some companies and see what you guys do i just love it how can somebody be sick of an illness and then there is a code that is able to remove that gene from you yeah. know i'm thinking man, what yeah. is go what's going on with the world <laughs> That's it. oh my god <laughs> wow so what do you love about what you do you know about your job what exactly do you love about the job yeah so one thing i love about my job is okay is the fact that you, you get a chance to be able to create something which doesn't exist, right? Mm. Because any software project which we get delivered or uh, 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 a proposal we get to our table, first of all, is a challenge, right? Because a lot of times, nothing like that has been done before. Mm -hmm. Although there are tools or there maybe it has been done before, but not to you, not by you. Right. Yeah. So this is something that is quite challenging at the same time as we're quite engaging. So it's yeah. that engagement itself that really excites me. And the fact that um, when we get something delivered and see the way that that software itself has the potential to change lives, you know, mm. that's something that really, really gives me joy. Take, for instance, now uh, this uh, pandemic, right, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, think how many people have actually because of Zoom, have been able to keep their business running for free. Mm. I know there are many, many services out there, but Zoom has an excellent delivery of, you know, uh, video communications and things like that. You know, it is so easy to, to, to get set up with Zoom. It is so easy to log on to it. And also they give you, I think it's about 60 minutes for free to use. To, to some companies, that's more than enough. Right? Yeah. They don't have to start subscribing to any sort of third-party services and things like that, you know. I know Google offers their own as well, but, I mean, just really thinking of companies out there doing or creating product which changes lives or which has the opportunity to change the lives of millions out there is something that is really, really engaging. And also as well, software is highly, highly scalable. It is mm. extremely scalable. You can have a software product uh, which is uh, localized for a specific region of a country uh, or yeah. of of, uh, of the of the planet for example let's say uh, you de you develop a software product for chinese right for the chinese markets and everything all the interface is in chinese and all of a sudden the software starts doing well a lot of people start using it you know you could yeah. easily skim that you could easily localize that for english or german or any other globe right without even paying uh that much money because you're not rewriting the code you just localizing it doing some changes and stuff and it's only going to cost you scaling up your, of your of your back end of your service and that's a good problem to have right when you have yeah. a lot of people coming into it you want you want everyone to start talking about it, everyone to start using it so i mean it's just a wonderful it's just a wonderful uh piece <laughs> of invention really yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i know now i'm not going to bring that maybe because you signed an nda concerning some projects but i know you were involved in a project then, some years back, that over a million people were using. I know yeah. of that one. 
And yeah. <laughs> is this something you want to talk about or you don't want to talk about it? Uh, okay. No, let's leave that. No, let's leave it. Let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, when I saw your involvement in that project, I was really impressed. Very, very much impressed. Because not only was that project later, not only was it used as a communication project, people started selling things there, which mm. is quite good. So the, yeah. it, it brings me to my next question. What skills do you need to become a software engineer? Okay. So um, I'll answer the question. I'll give you two answers. Because of the first question, which has a difference about software engineering programmers. So to be a software uh, engineer, you need some sort of like grounding, right? Uh, which means you need some level of knowledge. Uh, yeah. I don't necessarily mean formal knowledge, but like having a first degree or having a degree or whatever, right? You just need to have um, an, an analytical mindset, right? Um, you could even be, um, I find a lot of mathematicians actually bridge into some of the software uh, engineering uh, world. Uh, I have a friend now who was previously um, uh, a biochemist. He's now a software a programmer, but not an, not an engineer yet. Uh, because like I said before, a programmer could also function as a software engineer, but for that, you need to understand how a product lifecycle works, how yep. uh, to actually uh, carry out feasibility studies, uh, how to plan out what needs to be done, how to interact with uh, other stakeholders in the, uh, in the business as well, uh, from uh, the managers to uh, the developers to the testers and so on and so on. And you need to be able to communicate effectively, right? Now, I haven't said you need a formal not a formal qualification yet because I've seen a lot of people attend things like boot camps, come out and they perform ex exceedingly well, right? Now, the second answer to this question would be, uh, what skills do you need to become a programmer? I've just That's answered it. it in the first one. I think yeah. a boot camp, as easy as that. I think a boot camp, a, a, a coding boot camp. Right. If you have a coding bootcamp, what they generally do is they take you from a novice, from someone who doesn't understand, who doesn't know anything about writing code. You know nothing about it, right? So they take you from there and they teach you the basis from how to set up your computer. Because if you're gonna work as a software programmer, you need the right environment, you need the right tool sets, right? So they yeah. get, you're obviously it's a computer, you need a laptop. They set it up for you, they, they teach you how to set, how to download the required. Uh, software packages, the IDs, uh, the libraries, or any kind of dependencies that you need. So they take you from there and also teach you how to write your first line of code, depending on the language which you want to specialize in. You know, most times they teach you how to write the hello world code. We call it the hello world, which is like the first you know uh, line of code which you would write, which any programmer okay. would write. Really, you know. So that's how you start. And when you become good as a as a software programmer, you understand how that language works then it becomes very easy to translate that into other languages as well, right? Now, if you're smart, you can start looking at the entire end-to-end -end system, not just focus on one aspect of the coding, but understand how all these systems interact with each other. That means you need to understand the backend, you need to understand the middleware, you need to know a bit of DevOps as well, right? You also need to know a bit of project management as well because it is a lot, right? It doesn't mean you need to know everything 100%, or at least to have an understanding of how all these systems communicate with each other. That way, you know, you become a good software engineer. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like clapping for you. <laughs> it's so nice, you know, the way you just take it down. 